Hey everybody, welcome to the Kansas City Public Library's Make Do Tell story series. I'm delighted to be back with you this week, and this week I'm actually going to remember to tell you my name. I'm Jamie. I work for the library and uh, as a youth librarian, and I am also a storyteller. I love sharing stories with other people, especially kids, um, and teaching them how to tell them themselves. Uh, and really, my way of teaching generally is, let's do it. So I'm going to tell you a story first, just like I did last week. And then you can take that story, this new story, and learn it for yourself and share it with your friends and family as well. Um, like last week, we talked about how it's easier to learn a story that kind of has some repetition in it. And, and so I've chosen another story for you this week that has that repetition in it. This story is an Anansi story. And Anansi is a trickster spider. Trickster is someone who plays tricks on other beings, people, animals, what have you. They're usually smaller than the people or animals they're playing tricks on. Um, sometimes they do it for good and sometimes not so good. Anansi actually has both characteristics. Sometimes he does things for good, but quite often not. And this is one of those stories. So, oh, and Anansi stories come, uh, they, they originated in um, West Africa, and then they came across the ocean, and in the Caribbean, they became a part of their tradition as well. And so sometimes uh, the stories exist in one place and not the other, um, and sometimes they exist in both places, like stories generally from around the world. But this is, this is um, um, Anansi stories are so much fun. So here we go. So Anansi was walking through the forest one day and he came across this big rock and he stood up, stood up on it. And when he looked down, he saw that there were three smaller rocks and he counted them one, two, three. As soon as he said three, he fell over um, and was out. He was out for about an hour. And when he came to, he was like, what just happened? And they, he went back through and he's like, well, I was standing on this rock and he stood on the rock again and he looked down and he said, and then I counted the rocks, one, two, three, and boom, he fell over again, just like that. Well, again, he was about, uh, he was out for about an hour. And when he came to this time, he was like, I'm not doing that again. He said, but that would be great. I can take, I can bring some of my friends here and play this little trick on them. Then I can go and steal all the food that they always work so hard to gather, and I won't have to gather it myself. And so that's exactly what he did. Anansi went walking through the forest until he came to Monkey's house, and there was Monkey sitting on his front his front porch, just kind of reclining. He'd been out gathering all these nuts. He had a whole bushel basket full of nuts, um, and Anansi was so excited when he saw it. And he's like, Monkey, hey, it's so good to see you. And Monkey's like, oh, good to see you, Anansi, too. And he said, well, let's go walking in the woods. Why don't you come with me? It's hot here on your porch, but it is so nice and cool. Um, so let's go walking. And, uh, and Monkey thought that would be a great idea. And so the two of them went walking, walking, walking through the woods. And when they got to that clearing, Anansi's like, hey, Stand up there on that rock. I was just here a little while ago. And um, tell me how many rocks you see down on the other side of it. And so Monkey did. He climbed up on that rock. He looked down and he counted the rocks beneath him. One, two, three. And boom, just like that, Monkey was out. And Nancy did not waste any time. He scurried back to Monkey's house. And he took off with that bushel basket of nuts and took it to his own house. Well, some people might think that that should be plenty of food to feed a spider for a really long time. And indeed, they would be right. But Anansi was greedy. And so he decided he was going to take advantage of this trick that he had found. And so he went to visit his friend, the giraffe. And he walked, walked, walked through the woods until he got to, rat, to giraffe's house. And when he got there, there she was sitting on her front porch. And she had been out all morning, it looked like, because she had a big bag full of acacia leaves and twigs. And Anansi, he could almost feel his stomach rumbling. Um, he was so excited about the, 
food. But he played it off. And he said to Giraffe, oh, how are you today, Giraffe? And Giraffe said, I am good, Anansi. And so what brings you to my house today? And Nancy said, well, I've just been walking through the woods, and I know it's nice and hot here, um, but in the woods, it's very cool. In the, in the jungle, why don't you come with me? And we'll go walking together where it's nice and cool. And so a giraffe said, oh, I would like that, Anansi. And so the two of them walked and walked and walked. And of course, you know, Anansi took her right back to that spot in the woods. And he said, hey, giraffe, um, I was here earlier, and I stood up on that rock, and I... I was trying to count the rocks below, um, but I wasn't sure. Could you count them for me? And so Giraffe stepped up onto the rock, looked down, and said, Why, Anansi, there are one, two, three rocks. And boom, Giraffe fell over, just like that. Anansi, again, did not waste any time, but scurried off, left Giraffe there, and this time went to Giraffe's house and took that big back acacia leaves and twigs and carried it back to his house and left it there. And now you would think for sure that Anansi must surely have enough to eat for a really long time. And indeed you would be right, but it wasn't enough as far as Anansi was concerned. So off through the woods, Anansi went, walking, 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 walking until he came to Elephant's house. And there Elephant sat on his front porch. And Anansi spied a big bunch of bananas sitting there beside him. Elephant, my friend, how are you today? And the Elephant said, oh, oh, Anansi, oh, Anansi, it is so hot here. And Anansi said, oh, indeed it is. You know, I was just walking in the woods where it's nice and cool. There, deep in the forest, in the jungle, why don't you come with me? And Elephant decided that would be a good idea. And so the two of them went walking, 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 and you know where Anansi took Elephant. Sure enough, exactly there, that clearing there with the rock. And Anansi said, you know, Elephant, earlier I was here and I was counting these rocks over here. If you step up on this big rock, you can see them. Would you count for me? Because I wasn't sure if I got it right. And so Elephant stepped up onto that big rock, looked down. And so to Nancy, he took his big uh, trunk and said, I see one, two, three. Just like that, elephant fell over. And Nancy wasted no time or care for elephant. He went scurrying back to elephant's house, grabbed that huge, huge bunch of bananas and carried it back to his house. Well, you would think that surely Anansi had enough food now to last him for so long. And indeed, you would be right. But it wasn't enough for Anansi. He thought and thought and decided that he would go and visit his friend Hippo. And that's what he did. He walked and he walked and he walked through the forest until he came to Hippo's house. And Hippo was sitting there on her front porch. And Anansi said, good morning, my friend. How are you today? And Hippo said, oh, Anansi, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Oh, so good to see you. I was feeling kind of lonely and it is so hot here. So hot, don't you think? And Anansi said, oh, it is. But you know, I've been walking through the forest where it's nice and cool. I love the jungle in the summertime. So why don't you come with me? Hippo, and we will take a nice cool walk. And that's exactly what they did. And I know you know exactly where Anansi took Hippo. Sure enough, deep into the jungle, back to that spot where that clearing was with the rock. And Anansi said to Hippo, oh, Hippo, you know, I was here earlier today and uh, I stood up on that stone and I was trying to count the rocks, but I'm not sure I got it right. Would you mind stepping up and seeing what how many you see and just count them for me. And so Hippo did. And she counted, oh, one, oh, yeah, two, two, three. And as soon as she did, boom, she fell over, passed out. 
And so Anansi went scurrying back to his house, to Hippo's house. And there he took that big batch of grass that Hippo just had lying there on her front porch. And off he went back to his house. And there he laid that grass. Well, you're probably thinking, okay, surely now Anansi has enough food and is going to maybe eat some of it. But no, Anansi had one more friend he wanted to go and visit. And so off through the woods, he went all the way to Rhino's house. And Rhino was sitting on their front porch. And Anansi said to Rhino, Oh, my friend, I am so happy to see you today. I've been walking through the woods where it's nice and cool. It's so hot here. And, and Rhino agreed, oh, yes, so hot, so, so hot. And so Anansi invited Rhino to come walking in the woods with, with him. And they went walking, 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 and you know where they went. Sure enough, right back to that spot where the big rock was. And Anansi pointed to the rock and he said, uh, Rhino, my friend, earlier today, I was here in this clearing and I stood up on that big rock and I looked down and I started to count the little rocks, um, but I'm not sure I got it right. Would you mind stepping up and, and just telling me how many you see? And so Rhino did. They got up on that rock and looked down and counted one, two, three. And just like that, boom, Rhino passed out, fell over. And Anansi wasted no time, headed back to Rhino's house where there was a big basket of flowers. Took that big basket of flowers and headed back to his place where he left them. Well, I'm going to tell you, if you think that Anansi was alone in all of this and no one saw what he had done, you would be wrong. Because there, back up in the bushes, was a little deer. And that deer had watched this whole thing. And as she watched, she grew angrier and angrier that all of her friends too were being tricked and having their food stolen. So she decided to play a trick on Anansi. And as it turns out, Anansi just remembered that he had not been to see the little deer. And the little deer always had really yummy things like melons and yams. And so Anansi went walking, walking, walking through the forest and came to little deer's house. And little deer was just sitting there on the, on the front porch. And when she saw Anansi, she said, Anansi, welcome. And Anansi said, oh, my friend, I am so happy to be here. I've been walking through the forest all morning where it's so nice and cool. Would you like to take a walk with me? And little deer said, of course, of course. And so the two of them went walking, walking, walking through the forest. And little deer was not at all surprised when Anansi led her into that clearing and gave his spiel. Little deer, I was here earlier this morning and I stepped up on that rock and I looked down and I was counting the rocks on the ground there on the other side, but I'm not sure I got it right. Can you? Can you just double check me? And so little deer stood up on the rock and she said, I don't see any rocks. And Anansi said, well, sure you do, they're, they're right here. And he stepped up beside her onto the rock and he said, right there, how many are there? And she said, I don't see any rocks, Anansi. What are you talking about? And he said, Yes, you do. They're right there. You have to see them. And she said, I don't see any rocks. And he said, you see the rocks? Just count them. There are one, two, three. And just like that, Anansi fell over. And little deer went to Anansi's house. And one by one, she took all of the, the different meals that Anansi had taken and she delivered them back to the rightful owners who were very grateful to her. And if you think that Anansi learned his lesson that day, you haven't heard enough stories about Anansi. We'll see about changing them. All right, 
So that's the Anansi story for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. I really, I hope you loved it. And I hope that you will now go and tell it to some of your friends. And there's a couple of things I want to say about it. When I was looking at this story, um, there are different versions of it. Um, I had a harder time finding them than last week when I was looking for the Ghost with One Black Eye stories. But this is one of the most famous ones um, by Eric Himmel, uh, Anansi and the Moss Covered Rock. Well, um, some of the story is very much like that. Some of the story is uh, very much like uh, a story that one of, uh, that a man I used to work with told once that I got to hear. Um, his name was Kin, and he was an excellent storyteller. And I just loved that story the first time I heard it. And so um, that's what I wanted to tell you about finding. Again, you can go on the internet and look for stories, um, different versions and things like that. You might have a harder time with this one. Sometimes they're in books, um, and there are books that will help you find them, but those books themselves are not always easy to find. Um, so just know that about stories. When you see one that you really like, um, see if you can find out different places that it came from. The other thing that I would like to say, when I was looking at Eric Kimmel's book, I thought, well, what is it that different animals eat? Um, and so if you want to, like sometimes if you have to do like a science project, you could, you could look up what it is that, that the animals eat. And so I did, and I learned that elephants eat bananas. Uh, I thought that monkeys eat bananas, which they do, but that's not all they eat. I found out that monkeys also eat nuts. Um, and I found out that giraffes love acacia leaves in particular. Um, they, don't, they don't eat grasses because it's really awkward for them to, to bend over. And, um, and it makes them at risk for being somebody else's lunch. Um, so they don't do that. They're with their long necks, they reach up, they grab the leaves and eat them. Um, so it's always good when you're doing a story to make sure that you are reflecting things accurately. Um, and then it becomes kind of a science learning project too, which is sort of fun. Um, the other thing, and I don't think that I did it all that well in this story, but you have, uh, I don't know how many different characters. Um, you have a Nancy the spider, you have the elephant, you have the, hip, the hippo, the rhino, the monkey, and the deer, at least that. Um, there are different ways that you can use different voices. And some of that, it can be high, high pitched voice. It can be a low pitched voice. And sometimes you think about the animals being big, might have a deeper voice. Or sometimes you might want to play with that and the big animal has a really high voice. Um, what you want to do is be consistent about it. And sometimes uh, I really learn from other people by seeing how they don't do things right. So I'm sure I gave you plenty of learning opportunities today. Just saying. Um, but at any rate, uh, fast, slow, that's another way to do it. Um, so a couple of the characters talk much faster. Some of them talk really much slower. You don't have to exaggerate it that much, but you can for fun. Um, there was a, a class that I took um, that was taught by another storyteller named Carla Huntsman. And she did some really fun uh, uh, games that we played. And so what she talked to us about, I have here on this sheet of paper, is there are basic tools of expression. And loud and quiet are two pairs. Fast and slow are two pairs. Raising your pitch, the high and the low are two. You can pause before a word. You can pause after a word. Um, and then just varying the tempo. So she gave us this, um, this sentence, and I want you to play with it this week. The wind howled through the trees, sweeping the leaves through the thicket. Play with that, um, and I'll type it in, and I'll type in uh, into the um, information below the video, um, and I'll type in the different ways that you can tell a story. So if we did it like loud, 
The wind howled through the trees, sweeping the leaves through the thicket. You could do it quiet. The wind howled through the trees, sweeping the leaves through the thicket. You could do it fast. The wind howled through the trees, sweeping the leaves through the thicket. You can do it slow. The wind howled through the trees, sweeping the leaves through the thickets. You can do it high. The wind howled through the trees, sweeping the leaves through the thicket. You could do it low. The wind howled through the trees, sweeping the leaves through the thicket. And sometimes I'm combining, and you probably already saw that. Like when I did that lower pitch one, I also was slower. And sometimes it's like that, high and fast, low and slow. Um, you can pause before a word. The wind howled through the trees, sweeping the leaves through the thickets. You can do it after. The wind howled through the trees, sweeping the leaves through the thicket. And you could just vary the tempo. The wind howled through the trees, sweeping the leaves through the thicket. So um, play around with that kind of thing. Find sentences from books that you like. You can pull up a poem and just try it um, different ways. But these are great tools for thinking about creating different characters when you're doing a story. So I would love for you to actually do it with this story, uh, the Anansi story. Line out your characters and think about how they talk and how you can make them different from each other. All right, that's it for this week. Um, just know that the Kansas City Public Library has lots of resources for you, even while we're closed. Um, we have lots of on online resources. Hoopla, if you go looking for more stories that you might want to tell, uh, Hoopla is always has every book or uh, album or whatever we have. They have mo movies, books, albums, things like that. Um, audiobooks, books you can listen to, books you can read um, on a Kindle or, or a phone or what have you, a tablet. Um, all kinds of stuff, comic books, magazines, all of that stuff we have available online for you, kclibrary.org. Um, we are also doing this uh, tween series, uh, Make Do Tell. Tuesdays is storytelling. Yay, come back again next week. I'll have a new story for you. On, when, on um, Wednesdays, uh, Miss Samantha will be here, and she will be um, teaching you how to draw comics. And again, if you take the stories that you learn here, you can present them in comic book form and she'll teach you how to do that. And then on Thursdays, Miss Kaisha will be here and she will be teaching you how to take different things from around your house and create with them, whether it be kind of science-y or artsy or some combination thereof. Lots of fun going on at the Kansas City Public Library. Thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you again next week. Bye.